What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series of Weed Talk Comics. So the other day I was going through the special feature section in the Flash movie when I came across something labeled the Flash Escape the Midnight Circus. And I thought to myself, gosh, this sounds so familiar. Where have I heard that before? And then after a few seconds of thinking about it, oh yeah, this was an audio drama that released back in July as a bit of a companion piece to the Ezra Miller Flash movie. So if you own the Flash movie, whether physically or digitally, you have access to Escape the Midnight Circus. And this little story comprises itself of six episodes that range anywhere between 12 to 20 minutes. So the crux of the story is that Barry Allen is having difficulty balancing his life between being Barry Allen and being the Flash. So much to the point that Iris gets fed up with him and is like, yo, hey boy, we need a break. So Barry gets the bright idea to go back in time to try to relive that particular day to make it better. Unfortunately, he time traveled, so things went bad. Because when he wakes up, he is not only powerless, but has to partake in a sort of like runny man style game show called the Midnight Circus, where if he wins, he gets to walk free, but if he loses, he dies. And over the course of a few days in which I listened to all six episodes, it more or less got a few different reactions out of me. Sometimes it was a little chuckle, but most of the time it was just a, what? What the f Huh? Wait, why would, uh, I don't think that's right. Meaning that this podcast is a bit of a mixed bag because from the jump, one thing that the listener can definitely derive is that Barry Allen learned absolutely nothing from his experiences in the Flash movie since this is meant to be a companion piece. Because the whole concept of the Flash movie was that sometimes you just have to let things go. Take the future as it is. And let's be honest, I mean, we know he didn't really learn his lesson anyway from the whole tomato debacle. But even still, taking the conscious decision to go ahead and run back even one day just to change things, knowing very well that messing with the timeline can have dire consequences, he goes ahead and he does it anyway. And then even in that first episode, the inciting incident itself, which is Iris is effectively mad at Barry for constantly choosing to be the Flash in times of crisis, rather than spending any additional time with her. Like even as they're sitting in the therapist's office, like just, talking about it and Barry like zips out real quick to save a bus full of kids comes back and Iris is mad at Barry even though he says I just saved a bus full of kids she was still angry at him and makes Iris appear as if she wants Barry to neglect his hero responsibilities in order to service her feelings and then there's never really any indication that she's given him that same courtesy back even when Barry does get a call from Captain Singh about Captain Cold like robbing a bank right in the middle of an award ceremony where Iris is about to get something, Barry does attempt to deflect saying, hey, do you, do you really need the Flash? Like, do you got this? Which isn't really a good look on Barry because he doesn't want to run off and be the Flash because his girlfriend might be mad at him. And I think having a story where you have your main character struggling between, you know, their regular life and their superhero life is all well and good. I just think that on the writing side of things, they could have done a little bit better. Like instead, maybe have a story where Barry's instead pushing her away because he feels like he can't be Barry Allen as often as he can be the Flash. And then it's through his experiences in the Midnight Circus that he learns how important relationships are to him. Because at the end of the day, that is sort of like the message of the podcast. It's love yourself for who you are, not what you can do, and then don't take others in your life for granted. And then going back to the therapy sessions, anytime it's there, like you can tell Hell, they're trying to play it up for comedy, but at the same time, it's also just kind of cringy because it's effectively Iris and Barry or just Barry talking about being the Flash, being the superhero, and not even trying to be vague about it. And the therapist the whole time is just kind of like scratching his head and like, wait, Flash, superhero, wait, what? I mean, I guess they expect patient confidentiality to take effect in there, but I, I, I don't know. But there is some credit that I can give this podcast. For one, it's a Flash story that uses 
Flash characters. Because ever since Ezra Miller's like first appearance as Barry Allen, whether it was a uh, BVS or you want to count the Suicide Squad, the only Flash villain that was ever present in any of these films across the board was just Captain Boomerang. But this story actually uses a lot of Flash characters and particularly the villains. I mean, we've got Captain Cold, The Thinker, the top cicada rainbow raider dr alchemy i mean it's basically the flash's rogues greatest hits and i did find a lot of the stuff particularly surrounding the midnight circuits itself to be fairly fun to listen to because again it's this huge game show and even got cat grant as one of the hosts and they're just talking about these two contestants who are gonna have to like do some kind of you know, fight or puzzle or something to which, of course, the loser will die. But it's made to sound completely normal, completely natural, and is actually even played up. Like in one sequence where Barry has to play blackjack against another villain. As soon as Barry wins the game, they say, OK, now the guy is going to be ripped apart limb from limb by horses. And it's very game show like it's actually interesting in this weird alternate reality. You know, it's kind of fun. And then there's the voice acting. So much like the main story itself, it is a bit of a mixed bag. Because on one hand, I think all the voice actors actually sound really good. They sound very professional. It's just not all of the performances sort of match up. Like you have Max Greenfield, who's being, well, the Ezra Miller version of Barry Allen. And he does that very well. He's hyperactive, slightly neurotic, is sometimes fun, sometimes not. He definitely brings a level of awkwardness that reminds me of the Ezra Miller portrayal of Barry Allen, particularly in certain scenes where he has an interaction with his like alternate timeline dad and Barry's just talking about, hey, let's talk about, you know, if you could go back in time, would you save mom? And it just, it's just a really awkward back and forth between the two characters. And then there's all these other like little tidbits of information that you find out about like that universe's version of Barry, like discovering he's got bad credit to which the main Barry Allen finds that out. And it's just like, wow, that's actually really awful. Oh yeah. And then of course being completely upfront that he's from an alternate timeline to literally everybody i mean the minute he drops in the midnight circus he tells captain cold he goes to uh, the showrunners of the midnight circus saying hey I, I can't officially compete because i'm not this universe's version of barry allen i'm from an alternate timeline like tells everybody that he's the scarlet speedster called the flash but of course because he has no powers everybody just looks at him like he's freaking crazy and there were times in this audio drama where i'm like I, I do believe you are crazy. I mean, I know you're the Flash and you're from an alternate timeline, but go, going around and telling people you're from an alternate timeline probably isn't like the best way to present yourself. Like initially, the only people that are entertaining him are the showrunners in which they call up to their hire saying, hey, this guy's claiming to, you know, not be from our particular timeline. And the guy's like, well, I mean, if he looks like Barry Allen and, you know, sounds like Barry Allen and has the name Barry Allen and he admits he's Barry Allen, then he can still compete as Barry Allen. But then as you start to get into the other characters, you, you start to hit this sort of issue of, well, this character sounds how I think they would sound, but this character wouldn't. Take, for example, the villain Cicada. Now, Cicada is the leader of a cult that effectively worships the Flash. He's a killer, he's deranged, he's psychotic. He's also a little old, you know, got a nice gray beard going. And I would expect him to sound, you know, a little gruff, a little closer to, you know, maybe in the 60s range. But instead, he sounds like a 30 year old Italian from the Bronx. Child's play, a simple arithmetic problem. Seven times seven times seven, well, uh, times seven is, uh, uh, it's 2,401. Which ends up causing some cognitive dissonance on my part because having read quite a few Flash comics over the years and knowing a lot of these characters very well, you know, I keep thinking to myself, I, I don't think that's how that character should particularly sound. Because on one hand, I'm thinking, okay, wait, no, alternate timeline, maybe they are a little bit different. But at the same time, the way that each character is presented, especially the ones we've interacted with before, are no different from Barry Allen's like other villainous counterparts. So at the end of the day, while I wouldn't say it's a particularly good story or even a really good flash story, 
it did give me some entertainment. Again, I think the performances from the characters are really interesting. Some of the jokes do occasionally land. And as bizarre as it sounds, I could see myself hitting that play button again. So The Flash escaped the Midnight Circus. What'd you think about this podcast? If you've listened to it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with some friends. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what's watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.